That's what we're going to talk about right now with our move up buyer specialist, Bobby Martins with Keller Williams. Joining me here in studio, Bobby, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming in, man. Thanks for having me. Join me. All right, on the couch. I love it. All right, it's nice. <laughs> so a move up buyer specialist. I, I'm, you know, I pride myself on my integrity and my authenticity, and I can genuinely say there's nothing that excites me in real estate more right now than the ability to take the home you're in, rent it, and buy a bigger and better house, or maybe sell it and reposition into buying a bigger and better house. So let's, let's get started on that right away. Uh, you're helping people do this every single day. What's, what's the strategy involved? Well, I mean, you gotta look, obviously you have to look at every, your own situation. That's the biggest thing that I always tell people. You everyone's gotta, different, sure. Everyone's different. So, you know, strategize with your realtor and figure out what you can afford first and foremost, and then kind of go from there and see what, uh, what else is out there for you. But, you know, it really comes down to, you want to make sure you get the most bang for your buck and this is the time to do it because you can sell your house for a good good amount and then there's now that the inventory levels are picking up a little bit you can actually find other houses that are really great out there so it's, yeah, it's and, a good and time and to there do really it. are a lot of mistakes you can make with this i think people really oversimplify it. that's why we've really niched you as our real estate elite specifically for being a move up buyer we actually have a clip here uh, regarding the case shiller showing this appreciation from from earlier this week Sounds like the video's not pulling up, so we're gonna go to the stats. You know, we got a lot of stats from, from this week, here from SDAR. Now, I know that you're positioned in Carmel Valley. You're covering all of San Diego, though. I mean, Correct. what markets do you cover? Basically, anywhere in San Diego I can help uh, clients. My main area is from Carlsbad to downtown along the coast, but you know, I've sold all over the county, so I can help anyone anywhere. So when you were generating these statistics for me, you wanted to not just focus where your office is, you wanted mm -hmm. to look overall in San Diego. Correct. So what are, what are we looking at here? Well, you know, the exciting thing about the stats is just seeing the amount of sales that are actually happening out, happening out there. And it's not just, I mean, the sales are, you know, six or 7% across the board as far as units are, are up. Yep. But you look at detached homes, they're 25% higher when you look at the volume that is being generated. So people are buying more expensive homes because they're taking advantage of that move up situation. Same thing on, on attached condos, that's up 35%. So that's, that's a this. telling so thing when th I look at. This market, I, one thing I love about the San Diego real estate market is we'll never be dull on content, you know, for this show. It's, mm -hmm. It moves so quickly, I mean, there's, uh, there was a short sale market, then it moved to an appreciating market, and then now you have a low inventory. Now, now we're hearing that inventory's opened up. Mm -hmm. You were on this show uh, about a month ago. W what have you seen from the time you're on before till the time you're on now? Yeah, you know, things haven't changed a whole lot in the last month. I mean, August in general is a slower month in real estate. So, you know, you got a lot of people on vacations, buyers are on vacation, agents are on vacation. So, in general, it's a slower month, but it's the sales are still happening. I mean, it's yep. still it's still pretty busy out there. So not a lot has changed in the last month. But six months ago, obviously things were a lot different. You know, you yep. had a, a strong seller's market. We've seen things normalize just a little bit. So now it's, you know, you, you, instead of having to write up that full price offer or even go above full price, you don't necessarily have to do that on every single property out there. You're actually some, seeing some, some, you do. some price reductions now? Price reductions are happening. Interesting. Not huge though, because and the reductions are, are happening because people are overshooting the market. That's they, the biggest thing. They get a thing. little excited. People get excited, and, and you know, and agents they want to make sure that they're ca they're getting as much money as possible for their clients, and so they're listing prices or listing houses a little bit too high sometimes. A little aggressively. A little aggressive. And maybe so sometimes you that, that's in the agent's best interest to win over a client versus what what all of you guys do, which is win them over with just trust and great knowledge. Mm -hmm. So we got four ways that you can actually move up for strategies to moving up into that bigger and better home. Let's, uh, let's run through those real quick. Well, you know, the first way is obviously selling first and then doing a rent back. I like this as the best option because basically what that does is it puts you in the power position on both sides of the transaction. Okay. Okay, because then you know exactly what you're netting on your property. And so then once you have that sold, then you can go out and you can get the next property. And so it gets you in a better position on both sides of it. And it takes a lot of the panic and stress out because you know, a lot of people, what they do is they'll, they want to find that new property first. And so what they do is they make their house selling on a contingency basis. Okay. okay and so that's the second, uh, second way that you can do it. So you, you um, put a clause in the contract contingent on finding suitable housing. 
problem with that is the buyer is probably not going to want to pay as much for the property as a normal buyer would if they knew that they can close on that property in 30 days and move in. So typically you lose on that end and then when you're going to make an offer on a property, if you make it contingent on your house selling, then typically you're going to lose on that end too because that seller is going to want you to pay top dollar for that property at that point. So, you know, it's a lose-lose scenario there. but. Yeah, it does give people the peace of mind, and this is the biggest pro: is that if they don't find something, they can stay put. Right. And so that's one of the one of the things. So uh, what else, as far as moving up? What are the other strategies here? You can you can sell first, and then you can go rent for a while, and take your time and find the right property. Do a lot of people do that? Not a lot, but yeah. some some do because you know, especially if you're speculating on the market. I don't necessarily recommend doing. It. I don't think you need to do it. Well, if you got a family, I mean, go live out of a hotel. So I imagine that's not no. the most well, ideal. Usually, usually they do. They'll move into a, a rental for say three to six months. Yeah. You know, take their time on it, and you know, it, it serves a purpose. So, yep. so it's not a big deal. I mean, so but. What other options we got on move up strategies? I'm trying to remember the fourth one. All right. Let me see that slide there. Sell first, and then uh, we got that one. So buy first if you can qualify for the new home without selling, and then sell. So with that one, which is tougher, tougher because, because of qualification. You qualify. I want to. Yeah. I'm going to step in with some step of my in. background experience here. When when you have a house, if you don't have equity in it that's rented, you have to include the payment on that primary residence in your debt versus income ratio. But I mean, there's some people doing really well, you mm -hmm. know, really well financially, where you can actually qualify with both payments into that debt versus income ratio. So you got to get pre-approved for financing. We help you Correct. with that. Go to craigsewing.com. But the strategy, go ahead. So on, on the, which one? On, so basically, you're, you're qualifying for a bigger and better home gotcha. with your current house. When people do that, are they typically then going and renting their house out and, and having two assets? Well, if you can do that, then that's even a, a much better s scenario. because it's now a home run. It's a home run, absolutely. Especially if the mortgage is being covered by the rental payments that are being made on the new house. So, so, you so that's two huge. homes. You know, and, and it's not like people are in a house right now that necessarily has a bad interest rate or a bad payment. Mm -hmm. But if, if you can get that thing rented out to where it's relatively close to cash flowing, I'm not, I mm -hmm. mean, maybe it does cash flow, but let's say it's close. Uh, you go, you buy another house, put whatever down. You get that house going up in value. This house still goes up in value. This Now you got someone paying down principal. Mm -hmm. I, I got to remind you, know, I, I try not to give tax advice on this show because I'm not a CPA. Again, if you need advice, you need a CPA, go to craigsewing.com. But even if you're not even, let's say you have a $2,500 mortgage payment, you're only getting $2,200 in rent, don't forget you get to write that off. I mean, you get to write that off, you get to now depreciate the property. Mm -hmm. And if it goes up, let's say it's a $400,000 house, if it goes up five, 6% a year, you're gaining on both assets. Mm -hmm. And you can time the, the market correctly too. You can sell it at maybe you know, five Good years point. down the road. Another great strategy is to let that person pay off that mortgage for many, many years, and then maybe one day move back into that property. And as long as you live in it for two years out of the last five years, then you're basically avoiding any tax implications whatsoever. Let's look at your website, so. Bobby, so people can reach out if they're looking to move up, list your current house, wherever it may be, maybe buy something bigger and better. Great strategy. This is where you can visit Bobby. Go ahead and describe the website real quick, Bobby. Well, this is uh, our current website. We've actually got a new site that's about uh, ready to launch that we've completely- This is moveupsandiego.com? Moveupsandiego.com, right. and, and it's, uh, it'll, it'll be the same website, but we're redesigning it. But uh, you can reach out to me here at this site if you want to talk more about uh, move up, moving up. Moveupsandiego.com. I got to tell a quick story about Bobby before we go into break here. You know, we're, we're getting the show ready. Everyone's here, ready to- Talk about all these great, you know, real stories about people who are helping, market statistics, all that. And Bobby calls me up this morning and says, hey, what is the drop dead time I need to be there? I got, <laughs> I got so much going on. I'll show up. He walks in the studio. You're going to walk right out of here <laughs> helping people on your weekend. So uh, love what you do, man. You're a good friend. Thanks for having and me. I, it's and been I always, it's always love a pleasure. having you in here.